the EU hydrogen strategy is based on numbers that have no robustness. We are in the early stages of what I call the great hydrogen reset. Reality is dawning that hydrogen is expensive. It's more expensive to produce than anybody early on thought. McKinsey, the Hydrogen Council, even Bloomberg NEF. The hydrogen is expensive to produce, but it's also expensive to transport, expensive to store, expensive to distribute, and unless you're in fertilizers or petrochemicals and using it already, it's expensive to use. The EU's 20 million tons by 2030, the global hydrogen energy ministerial's 90 million tons by 2030, those would require literally trillions of dollars of gap closing money. And all that's available is some tens of billions. So you're, you've got a tens of billions hammer and people trying to run around hitting a trillion dollar nail. So when it comes to aviation, I have a bit of a problem because in the current version of my hydrogen ladder, aviation fuel is on row B, and specifically this thing called ESAF, which would be taking biogenic carbon, carbon coming out of maybe agricultural residue or forestry residue, and then extracting the carbon from that, probably as CO2, and blending it with hydrogen that is made from renewable energy. So you take renewable hydrogen, green, uh, green electricity, green hydrogen, and biogenic CO2, and you make a fuel. And that's at B on my hydrogen ladder. The problem is, I don't think I believe it anymore. First of all, it's really expensive. So when you blend 1% of something that costs five to 10 times more, everybody can afford it, that doesn't matter. But as you increase the blend mandate, you start pushing up the cost of jet fuel and people start noticing it when they're going on holiday. And if you push up the cost of fuel, so you get to, let's say, let's give an example. Let's say you get 10% blend at five times more expensive than jet fuel, that pushes up the fuel cost by 50%. And you will feel that when you take your family on holiday. So the political consensus around this mandate process, I believe is going to fracture. That's first hand grenade. Why you would use green electricity, green electricity, which you've generated, you could use it to push coal off the grid. You could put it in a heat pump, power heat pump, or you could use it to charge an EV. And those three uses would reduce emissions by up to nine times, nine times as much as trying to take that electricity and put it in and make ESAF with it. So if there's really a climate emergency, why would we make ESAF? My third hand grenade was, well, if you've got that CO2, why go to the brain ache of making hydrogen and then combining it into a fuel and then distributing the fuel to an airport or to all airports? Why not just take that CO2, biogenic CO2, and bury it, sequester it, stick it under the North Sea, cap it off forever in a depleted gas field at one-tenth of the cost? 